Welcome to the Crocker Science Center Educational Labs. In this video, we will be covering the basics of operating a microscope, including the parts of the microscope, the procedure for finding and focusing on a sample, how to change the objectives, and how to leave the microscope at the end of the lab so that it is ready for the next user. We'll also go over some general rules to keep in mind and some basic troubleshooting. If after watching this video you still have questions, be sure to ask your TA or instructor for clarifications. The first step towards being able to comfortably and confidently use a microscope is to know what the different parts of the scope are and what each part does. The first component we'll cover is the eyepiece, which can also be referred to as the ocular lens. This has a 10 times magnification and can be adjusted for comfort as shown here. Additionally, since variations in vision between eyes can exist for a given individual, each eyepiece can be independently adjusted from the other to allow for optimal clarity. If this adjustment is needed, please ask your TA for more information. Moving down from the ocular lens, we come to the revolving nose piece. The nose piece holds the objective lenses, and each of these has a different magnification. Below the objectives is the stage, which is where you will place your slide. On the stage, you will find a stage clip. This will keep your slide secure and is connected to the stage controls, which in turn can be used to make small positional adjustments to the slide. Below the stage, you will find the condenser, which can be adjusted to allow for more or less light to illuminate a sample. And below the condenser is the lamp or illuminator. You can change the intensity of the lamp with the dial shown here. On the microscope frame, you can see a set of two knobs. The larger one is the coarse focus knob, and the smaller one is the fine focus knob. Last but not least, we have the power switch. While these are the basic parts of this specific microscope, different microscope models can have variations on the exact location and types of features present. Now that we know the basic components, let's walk through how a microscope can be used to view a sample. Sample preparation will vary by course and experiment, so we will not cover that in this video. Follow any instructions provided by your TA or instructor. Once you have a sample prepared, power on your microscope. Then check that the stage is at the lowest position and that the revolving nose piece is rotated until the lowest powered objective has clicked into position. For this particular model, the lowest powered objective lens is the 10x objective. Next, position the slide on the stage, making sure to secure it in place with the stage clip and to center it so that a portion of the sample is in the field of view. With the sample in place, raise the stage to its maximum height. Then, while looking at the sample through the eyepiece, slowly lower the stage with the coarse focus knob until you can clearly see the sample. If when looking through the eyepiece you only see black, double check that your slide is positioned correctly so that light is going through it. If adjusting the slide does not fix the problem, there might be an issue with the condenser alignment. In this case, let a TA know. Now that the sample is in view, we can start adjusting other parameters such as centering, the level of illumination, and fine focusing. If there is a specific part of your sample that you're trying to look at, the slide will need to be moved so that the distinct feature is in the center when viewed through the eyepiece. To do this, use the stage controls to make fine adjustment to the slide's position. There are two different ways to adjust the amount of light illuminating the sample. One is with the lamp intensity dial, and the other is with the condenser. If using the condenser to tune the illumination, it is recommended that you use the position that corresponds to the objective that you are using. If at this point your image is still not sharp, you can focus using the fine adjustment knob. Finding and focusing on a specific part of your sample can be difficult. If you are struggling, here are a few tips that can help. Always start focusing with the lowest power objective and work up to the higher power objectives. When you think you have something in focus, you can check by using the stage controls to move the slide slightly. When you do this, the image should also move. 
You can then use the Find Focus knob to get the best image possible. Position the sample so that you have an identifying feature, like a sticker at the end of a prepared slide, in the middle of the light and focus on that. Then you can move the slide so that the sample is in the middle, before again using the Find Adjustment knobs to bring the image into better focus. If you're having trouble focusing, revert back to the lowest power objective and refocus before returning to the higher power objectives. Once the sample is in focus and you have gathered all the needed data at the current magnification, you can shift to using a higher power objective. There is a common misconception that when changing objectives, the stage needs to be lowered, but this is not necessary. To change objectives, look at the microscope from the side and use the revolving nose piece, slowly rotate the next higher powered objective into place. Microscopes are parfocal, meaning that if the sample is in focus for one objective, then it should be in focus for the other objectives as well. However, after you have changed the objective, if the image is not clear, you might still need to refocus. When you are focusing at this point, you should only use the Find Focus knob. If after focusing, you find your slide is no longer centered, you can use the stage controls to recenter the sample. Continue this process for shifting through all the needed objectives. If your sample disappears from view at any point, return to a lower power objective and recenter your sample. If you need to change slides, use the course adjustment knob to lower the stage all the way. Switch to the 10x objective or your microscope's lowest powered objective lens and remove the slide. At this point, restart the process described for finding and focusing on your sample. When you are done with the microscope for the day, go through the following steps. First, lower the stage. Then switch to the 10x or lowest powered objective. Finally, remove your slide, power off the microscope, and replace its cover. Let's talk through some general things to keep in mind when working with microscopes. First, never touch the objectives. If you need to work with a different objective, you should use the top of the revolving nose piece to affect the change. Handling objectives directly can loosen them from the nose piece over time. Second, when you are working with higher powered objectives, only use the fine adjustment focus knob rather than the coarse knob. Third, always focus on your sample with the lowest powered objectives before moving on to the higher powered objectives. Fourth, take your time. This can be a slow process, but taking your time earlier can save you a lot of frustration and time later on. Fifth, make sure that your slide is seated correctly on the stage. If it has not been properly secured, you will not be able to move the slide effectively. Now that we've covered all about microscopes, here are a couple final tips that might come in handy if you're having trouble. First, if you continually see specks on the sample, there might be dust on the lenses. If this happens, let your TA know so the lenses can be cleaned. And then lastly, if your image is always blurry, regardless of the stage height and position, there might be an issue with the lens. In this case, please inform your TA. Remember that if you have any questions, you can always ask your TA, instructor, or lab personnel. Thank you for your attention and for doing your part to help maintain the equipment here in the Crocker Science Center.